Our show centers the narratives of five trans women of color. And I spent two years pitching this pilot in and out of rooms and being told no. It was too queer, it was too trans, there were too many black people, too many Latin people, it's a period piece. And so to finally have the show be produced and to have a collaborator or collaborators in Ryan Murphy and Brad Falchuk, it's like, you know, I won the lotto. And yet I was dealing with a little PTSD from all of the no's <laughs> that I thought, oh, it's gonna go out into the world and people just aren't going to get it. Like my fear the entirety of filming the first season was, I'm gonna be the person who co-created a show with Ryan Murphy that's a bomb. <laughs> you know, and then it goes out into the world and people embrace it and they love it and they understand exactly what our intention was and the heart space that we approach the narrative with. I'm curious for you, I mean, because you really, you are sort of striking this balance between both sort of celebrating the exuberance of the period, but also there's some real bleakness. Yeah. What is that sort of navigation and the conversations that, that you're having with, uh, with the writers as you do that? Right at the inception of the pose, Ryan and I spent a lot of time talking about the juxtaposition between the two worlds. Mm -hmm. The physical posing that is happening on a ballroom floor, and then, you know, the posing that happens in your everyday life, the masks that we wear, who we pretend to be. Mm -hmm. And I think the show is trying to highlight that experience, what that means to have goals and to have aspirations, to want to live a life bigger than, than what the world has deemed you should live, mm -hmm. right? And I think that that's at the core of what of what Pose is all about. We have this marginalized group of people who are fighting to survive, right? And from them, we can learn a whole lot about resilience and about respect and love. And, and it's a tricky balance, right? We're like constantly sort of towing the line and, <laughs> <Yeah>. and <laughs> walking a tightrope between juxtaposing what is happening in a ballroom community, which is fun and colorful and just effervescent and full of life with the very real reality that a lot of the folks who were a part of the ballroom community in the 80s were HIV positive, mm -hmm. right? right? Mm -hmm. And being black or being Latin meant that they didn't have access to healthcare. Mm -hmm. You know, they didn't have that medical resource, you know, or they were being denied opportunities for employment. And so what does that mean? What does that mean for this community to exist at a time where the government was saying, your life has no value? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. And then finding a community in the ballroom where you absolutely do have value, but know that that's, you know, there's a ticking clock mm -hmm. that yeah. says that, you know, very shortly, you're no longer going to be on this earth. At present, you know, the life expectancy for trans women of color is 35 years old. And so on our show, in the pilot, you know, we have a character, Angel, played by India Moore, who meets Evan Peters, character Stan, and that's the beginning of a love story, right? But the audience who was tuning in, specifically the trans community, they were watching that narrative and they were afraid that mm. he was going to be violent against her because more often than not in the real mm -hmm. world, that is what is happening. Mm -hmm. um, and so by the time we got to, I think it was probably the fourth episode, we finally, all of us, the, the writer's room, just had to tweet out to everyone who was watching, like, Angel's gonna be fine. <laughs> like, she will not die. She will, there will be no violence enacted towards her this season. They were coming in week after week, holding their breath, just waiting for that moment. And we were like, that's not our intention here. But is there yeah. a piece of you as dramatic storytellers that sort of wanted that, that holding their breath aspect to the watching? No, because I think the trans community is one that has been victimized yeah. historically. And so we certainly didn't want to re-traumatize the yeah. community in any way. It was important for us to let the audience know that that's not the intention of, with the story that we're telling. And even though they've seen Evan Peters on American Horror Story. <laughs> yeah. right. Which I don't think helped. No, I'm sure not. Hi, I'm Sam Asmel. I'm Marty Knoxon. Hi, I'm Stephen Canals. I'm Sarah Gamble. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching The Hollywood Reporter Roundtable. The Hollywood Reporter Roundtable. Roundtable. On YouTube. On YouTube.